Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at Maker Faire 2012 in New York City, and I'm at the Formlabs booth with David and Max, who uh, built a new kind of 3D printer. Uh, David, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the Form 1 and, and what how it's different from kind of the 3D printers we're more accustomed to? Yeah, sure. So the Form 1, um, as opposed to many of the other low-cost 3D printers that may, you may have seen around, um, uses a process called stereolithography, um, which uses a laser being shot at a bath of photocurable polymer to harden it, as opposed to extruding a melted filament of plastic. So, so, so instead of building from the bottom up and a, and a print head that extrudes plastic going one layer at a time, you're literally lifting, it looks like you're lifting a model out of a, a bath of resin, right? Yeah, so basically the way that it works is the build platform comes down to the very bottom of the bath of resin and we have a laser that comes in through the bottom and each layer is drawn in the space between the bottom of the bath and the previous layer. And so what's amazing about that is that because of the material properties of the resin and because of like how tightly you can focus a laser, you have fundamentally much greater limits on resolution than you do with a fused deposition modeling process. And you end up avoiding problems that have to do with uh, cooling plastic like warping and, and stuff like that as well, right? Yeah, exactly. There's only one precision axis in the machine and that's the Z platform that moves up and down. So then how do you focus and steer the laser? Is there, I assume there's some proprietary stuff in there. Yeah, there's some, some, some clever things that we've done to make it extra reliable. I mean, the whole point of what we're doing is we're trying to make a machine that's a professional technology that's affordable for professional product designers and engineers, um, but who may be individuals and don't have access to the resources that a huge company would. And what about when you're printing things with like big overhangs or, or uh, maybe uh, holes, cavities, stuff like that? Does, that? does that stuff work better or worse, or are there a different set of challenges entirely? Yeah, so I mean, we can do stuff with uh, much bigger overhangs, um, partially because of the process, but also because partially because we have written our entire our own software package. So you can import a model, and it can detect where there are overhangs and generate smart support structures that go up to it. So then when you print it off, the thing comes off on these, this little pin bed, it kind of looks like, and then you can just snap it off, and it feels like you're peeling it off of a piece of Velcro. Very cool. What what um what actually is the resin like? Is the resin safe to handle? Is it something you can be around for a long period of time, or is it something you want to kind of be, be a little careful with? Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that you don't want to like touch on your skin or rub in your eyes, but it's about the same level of toxicity as any other household chemicals, like, like rubber cement. Yeah, like rubber cement or something. Okay. Very good. Uh, you said you did some custom software work. Uh, what, what? How much of the software is custom? Did you start with open source projects or uh, grow entirely from scratch? Uh, we grew entirely from scratch. Uh, Max is our technical lead here. And and uh, wanted to say some things about the software. Yeah, Max, let's hear about software. Sure. So uh, um, we developed the entire uh, software package, and we've done, you know, we had to do a lot of things to to make it work with our machine. Because it's a much higher resolution machine, we you actually have to output a toolpath at much higher speed. So that was kind of sort of just a, a basic problem we solved. And, and what's your resolution both on the layer and for layer heights? So the layer resolution can be as thin as uh, 25 microns. And then we like to talk about a minimum feature size, which is kind of the smallest little pillars and other features you can have in your part, which can be down to 0.3 millimeters. You can also build cavities inside structures as well, right? Yeah, we can build cavities inside structures, and we can do a much wider range of geometries than, than other machines. So this is a form software package. Um, so once you've got it open, you hit import to load up a model. I'm going to load up this Neptune model over here. And um, you can see you know, we've got this model here. And there's some easy tools to reorient the model as you like. Um, you see it automatically adjusts the model so it's above the build platform. Um, if you want to make a second model, you just duplicate it. Um, and it'll automatically um, make sure that it's located on the bed. OK. And, um, and then you hit over to the support uh, generation. And, um, and you hit generate supports, takes a couple seconds. And yeah, oh, so wow. again, it generated some support structures that, that, uh, that will support this part while it's being printed. And you can see you know, it's supporting this very long, thin um, trident that wouldn't, wouldn't be able to print without them. So you can print, also, this means you can print stuff without flat surfaces. Exactly, yeah. Can you, you can, of course, scale and all the normal stuff that you would yeah. expect you to be able to do in, a, in, a, uh, in the printer software. Yeah, you can move the models around. And what's the build plot, build uh, area like? Max? This is uh, 125 by 125 millimeters, or it's about 4.9 by 4.9 inches. And how tall? 
uh, by 165 millimeters, which is six and a half inches. Great. And I assume the orange uh, canopy is to prevent UV from outside interfering with the pot, with the resin? As well as keeping the laser inside. Ah, uh, okay. So how sturdy is the material after it's after it's been uh, cured? And you have it run it through a kind of post-processing uh, process as well, right? Yeah, so as with any 3D printing process, there are some finishing steps that have to be done in order to get the freshly printed part ready for use. And so because our goal is design the, to design the entire process of 3D printing from the software to the machine to the finishing steps, um, we've also designed a custom finishing tray and accessories package. Um, so what we have is we have a thing that you can take the build platform off when your print is finished. There's a jig in the tray that you put it into. You break the part off of its support structures, and then we have some little baths of just isopropyl alcohol and water and a little rinsing basket that you dip the part in to, to, do, to finish the part up. And that removes the excess resin and anything else from the, from the part? Yep. Uh, so how sturdy is the plastic, how sturdy is the part when you're done? How, can you make it, you know, is it something I could make that I could stand on or is it, is it a more brittle plastic? Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why stereolithography is awesome is that you can do a really wide range of materials. So you can do things all the way from hard rubbers to hard plastics. You can do different opacities. You can do different colors. You can do things that are suitable for lost wax casting if you're a jeweler. Um, so there's a huge wide range of materials. Um, when we launch, we're just going to launch with a single resin product because we have so much other stuff going on. And it's just a, a flat gray resin with, with reasonably decent mechanical properties. Um, in a lot of the customer research we were doing, a lot of the designers we were talking to request that we do something with a nice gray. Not just gray, but nice gray, um, so that it could be used for look and feel models or for painting or something like that. Um, but in the future, we'll, we're definitely planning to make an entire line of resins so that people can make anything that they want. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see the Form 1 in, in action. And uh, we'll be back with more from Maker Faire uh, real soon. I'm Will from Tested. See you guys later.